Hi there. This is Judith O'Day from George Romero's original Night of the Living Dead back in 1968. You're listening to the Movie Rage Show. It's time for the Movie Rage. Tonight's victim is actress Judith O'Day that is played in Night of the Living Dead of George Romero's work, amongst many others. Hello. Hello, hello. It's good to be with you, Mike. Always, man. I know the uh, Night of the Living Dead anniversary is coming up. Is there anything else that you also care to add to that that you'd like to promote or anything that we can check out? right now. I had a, a film I had a wonderful, fun little cameo in that should be out sometime this year. It's called Kill Giggle. I think Lionsgate is releasing it, so we're keeping our fingers crossed that it should be out sometime this year. Being in the industry off and on when you had to come back, have you or would you compare or use your performance from Night Living Dead as an example or future example for your dramatic performances? I have played over the years, not only in film, but on stage, a variety of different roles. And some of them similar, a little bit similar to Barbara, but so many of them were so very different. I'd certainly like to think that my performance as Barbara stands out as one of my favorites, but well, it if the character, the new character, called for that, if it was similar to Barbara, I certainly would go back in my mind and remember, draw upon what we did back then, what George allowed me to do. That's probably when I would go back and use Barbara as an example for a similar role. Now, having been a part of what was a low-budget horror film, and that eventually turned into a classic, and of course, many independent films like this one as well also had ups and downs, and there was all kinds of things going on with everything in between everyone's lives and so forth, especially being preserved by the public. Do you feel that this is almost rare in today's film? Would would you say this is a, a, a crowning motivation for you and to continue to be a better performer, even affect others because of this crowning achievement of Night of the Living Dead? I never in my wildest dreams would have thought Night of the Living Dead in 2023 would be even more popular than it was when it first came out. In fact, many people thought it was very unusual and <laughs> wouldn't hang around. But it's become such an important legacy in my life that you mentioned affecting other people, those who've watched it possibly, and also affecting those in the industry. Our film really did that. It did affect how horror films were made from then on. That's a very important thing that I will never, never forget. I have to tell you a story. I was at a convention. I received a question from an attendee. It was an older woman. She said to me, did you ever think what an impact you had, your performance, your character, on young women looking at you in that film back in the 60s and the 70s? And no one had ever ask a question like that. It stopped me in my track. And I said, tell me what you mean. She said, so many women look at that character as a woman, not of weakness, but of strength. Here was a woman who was devastated by the loss of her brother, who was chased to a farmhouse, who's trying to survive. And in the end, even though she goes into a catatonic state, she comes back out and she fights to survive to the very end when she runs up to that door, slams that piece of board up against the wall to prevent the ghouls from coming in. I never thought of my character that way. I was just thrilled to be a young actress playing a lead in a film, that woman's question made me stop to realize, my gosh, how performances in films, not only horror films, but any film, can affect the viewing audience. That was a very special moment for me. I'll never forget it. And I'm extremely grateful that Barbara, my performance as Barbara, has played an important role in many people's lives over the decades who have seen it, many women especially. Especially today's independent filmmaking, when this type of character is kind of almost replicated, but not exactly carbon copied, how do you feel about that when they're using almost like an example of their own to use in their own films? Do you feel like use a blueprint 
of what you do is because of that that effect that you had on people. Such value in that character and how it represented that they would want to use it as a blueprint for something they were doing. That's really a, a wonderful compliment, I think, to the character. I must know that people will say, well, you fell down and so many young actresses in horror films after Night came out started falling down. I have to laugh at that because women being, in many people's eyes, weak characters and they fall down and they're, they're caught by the, the evil whatever. You know, I fell down not because I was told to fall down. I fell down because I was running so gosh darn fast. I slipped and just lost it and fell down. <laughs> Some actresses use that falling down in a, a horror film escape I have to chuckle over it because I was just doing my best to run like the wind and <laughs> get out of the way of the ghouls you also have improvise a great deal of some of the lines in the night of living dead as well and we wouldn't have known that until you said something but it did work as well and you feel that that also works when you had to do it on the spot or asked to do it on the spot do you feel like this actually works for you best in some of your roles as well or do you feel like use that use caution but give it a shot and see what happens type of method well that really is up to the director george allowed us the freedom to improvise we did have a script it wasn't is complete. It, I never read a complete script before I started to do the role, but George gave us the freedom to improvise in certain scenes because he didn't have it all written down. He, he had an idea in his mind. Improvisation comes more easily to some performers than to others. Some actors just grab on to the written word that the author has put down and deals with that. If you can improvise believability from your heart, from your soul, and it works, then great. But oftentimes actors don't have that freedom of choice. It's up to the director to either allow that freedom or not. We were lucky. We were given that freedom freedom by George. I thought it worked quite well. And as far as being orchestrated, uh, you know, and coordinated within this film, like the whole cast, I mean, it, that you had a few other members in the cast and uh, the crew themselves. They them themselves are actually in part or taking charge of the film itself and not the usual we, what we're used to of today's filmmaking. It's that everybody was just doing what they can to make this film. And because at that time, everyone had their own jobs. They had their own companies going on and they had to take care of their own jobs at the same time while doing this. So as far as the pay goes, how, how did that affect affect you to survive getting this type of gig and, and without actually knowing that anything special was actually going to happen with this well I was a young actress at that time. I was um, when the movie came out I was 23 years old. I had started in as a professional in theater when I was 15. I was in musical theater. Then I expanded into TV variety work and commercials for TV and radio. So by the time I did that film, I already had a wonderfully exciting little career going for myself. I was making money and I was able to pay for my own apartment and buy my first car with earnings from some of the theatrical events and TV things that I did before Night of the Living Dead. I realized going into this movie that there wasn't a big pay involved, but that didn't matter, Mike. What was exciting was my God, I have been accepted in a film that I, I've always wanted to make film. And here I, I had an opportunity at my age to be a lead in a feature film. It didn't bother me that I wasn't making a, a thousands of dollars doing it. I didn't even think down the road if there would be a lot of money involved. What I thought of only, and this is an honest reply to you, I thought how grateful and excited I was just to be be in the film. I even put some of my own money into the film, not knowing <laughs> if I'd ever make it back, but 
it was just a thrill to do it. How do you see with indie? It is very hard today, especially very hard. And I'm not saying it wasn't then either, but like today, a lot of artists, directors, they're, they're trying to make their movie. They're trying to do those indie go-go's and kickstars and so forth. And sometimes like they don't have any previous work like commercials or anything else that they did prior to doing this and the actors and so forth. I mean, everyone is always trying to get somewhere, you know, live off of money. But do you think some of these methods are a little bit far-fetched and shouldn't be the main fix it? Because like you said, you were grateful for for doing this role but you also were making a living before that right and you say that it's hard for indie films actually i look back and we were using film stock we didn't have the luxury of using digital cameras where you can lay it down and see it immediately if you don't like it you do it again for young filmmakers today in many ways it's easier for them to make a movie they can do it with their own cell phone if they want to and as far as releasing it they go to the internet and somehow some way these young folk who are so dedicated will find a way to get their film out there but in mainstream distribution in the hollywood new york and the, the big time theatrical releases that is a very difficult cutthroat business eat today as well i know oftentimes young filmmakers think will i ever will anybody ever look at what i've done will anybody ever release it but they keep on going that's what makes film to me so exciting the dedication that young filmmakers have to persevere in a cutthroat business as far as that distribution goes, and, and keep in mind, Night Living Dead is quite up there on the age now. I mean, how does the image still keep alive for you? Do you still get the compensation that you deserve as well as your gratuity? Everybody loves the film, but as far as like getting the film out there internationally and all that other stuff, like, do you feel like it, it, it's still very helpful e even today? Today, Night of the Living Dead has greater visibility throughout the world than it ever had when it was first distributed by Walter read Continental. Now, Criterion, who did the remastering of it back in 2017, to such perfection that the federal government gave us our own copyright after almost 50 years without one, allowed the film to be legally seen all over the world in a beautifully clear, well-remastered copy. I think, as I said earlier, the visibility of the film is incredible nowadays, and it's only growing more with what Criterion did for it, what the work of some of the dedicated people who are a part of our Image 10, who have gotten us legal rights to our own images. You know, we never had that, Mike. Decades ago, people could take our pictures right from the movie and use it. They could take clips from the movie and use it in major motion pictures from Hollywood. I bet a dime to a dollar you've seen cuts from Night of the Living Dead in several very famous horror films. <laughs> of it. Well, one I can remember, I don't consider it a horror film, but Bound. I was in the theater with a bunch of friends. We were watching the movie Bound with Gina Gershon, and there was a cut of, of me on the screen. I never got paid for that, but nowadays I do. So the hard work with people who believe in this film has now made it more visible and more financially successful than ever before. Yeah, when you were coming back into the film industry and getting more work like how does one actually stay relevant within the indie filmmaking community i mean obviously you can be easily be irrelevant the hollywood based and bigger budget films and so forth if you've been absent for a long time and so you almost have to stay constant how do you stay relevant when it comes to indies you, you think it'll be easy or, or is it more of a, a challenge to still be in there still get the work and still be recognizable for what you are and what you do oh well if you're known in a job Genre, then that's what you focus on. Sure, I would have loved to have made a film similar to Gone with the Wind, <laughs> but, but that didn't happen. I think independent film, everybody working in it is independent. And if you want to continue making those films like Brink Stevens and Lynn Lowry, so many others, they put their face out there, they do their promoting, they talk to the people they work with who know other people, they continue working in the industry. My my life was not only the film industry, but my life involved the theater 
and, and working in the theater, it also involved my setting up my own communications company. So I, I wasn't just totally focused on remaining visible in independent film. I loved it. I loved the films that I was invited to do, but I had many other avenues, artistic avenues, that I pursued during my life between 68 and now. And I'm still doing it, as a matter of fact, and, I, and I'm very grateful for it. But you have to work hard for something you really want. An independent film is a challenge. Well, go ahead and plug in any websites or anything that you care to promote, and uh, what can we see with the Nylon Dead anniversary? Uh, can you give us any details about that as well? We have quite a few conventions that are coming up that will be focusing a bit on that 55th anniversary. I'll be in Orlando, Florida at Spooky Empire. Days of the Dead in Indianapolis will focus on it. The Creature Con in Concord, California, the one-day event. And uh, also in Harmony, PA, we're going to have a whopping Living Dead weekend to celebrate the film. It's going to be a busy, wonderfully exciting year. Mike. I just finished writing a screenplay. The screenplay is based upon a short story I wrote a long time ago. I just put the end <laughs> on that screenplay first draft a day ago. I have already sent it out to have several people read it. Even though I'm an up in years here, my seventh decade, I would love, love to pursue getting that film made. So I'll put it out there. It's called The Old Lady and the alien and if there are any young independent filmmakers who might like to take a look tell them to get in touch they can do that via my website www.odaycommunications.com there you have it everybody that is actress judith oday